Hey there everybody and welcome back. Today I am coming at you from a really boring wall in my living room with my sofa next to me because Madeline is awake. She is currently playing some educational games on her Kindle and Everly, the newest addition to our family, is kind of like stirring in her pack and play and my middle, Kaylee, is actually down for her nap right now. So I'm kind of trying to make everything work but I still wanted to bring you guys this video. Um, I think this video can be pretty important for some people. Um, it can be kind of like eye-opening for some people and maybe help some other people. Um, this whole experience has been pretty eye-opening to me um, because I'm going to be talking about having an oversupply or creating an oversupply of breast milk, which to me was a really good thing because I have to go to do student teaching in the fall. So I was like, oh, if I can just get an oversupply, then I'll have enough milk saved up for her. I'll have a lot in the freezer and things will be fantastic. I've always struggled with having enough milk for my kids and so creating an oversupply seemed like the right thing to do. Along the way of this journey, I have found out a lot of things that make this slightly difficult or I've found out that having an oversupply isn't necessarily the greatest thing um, for me personally. However, it might be good for somebody else. So I'm going to show you what I've done for my oversupply and talk to you about why for myself having an oversupply isn't necessarily a good thing. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I've managed to collect in just one week. So this is my little stash. This is one week of milk that I have collected. These are all about five ounces. Some have six ounces in them. I have almost 90 ounces of milk in the freezer. Now that is not including about the 20 ounces of milk that I've actually had to dump because I've brought it with me when we leave the house and it sat out for too long or it's, you know, sat out at my house for too long or, you know, for whatever reason. And that's also not including what she actually eats from me because I do breastfeed her on top of getting all of this extra milk. So that is a lot of milk. And like I said, most of these are like five ounces. So they look like this. I freeze them flat. I'll show you how I do that as well. And then I date them, put how much is in them. And I put them in these perfect little cubes that seem to fit very, very, very well, like so. Um, this one is totally full, but this was one week. So if I'm filling up one of these a week, that is going to be absolutely insane. Anything I show, including these cubes that I just showed you, I will put in the description box down below if you would like to purchase anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you kind of what I've done and what I'm using and just how this is all working out. So to start out with, I have inverted nipples, so I am very flat. There's nothing for the baby to latch onto. So I have been using the Medela nipple shield. This one is a size small, 20 millimeter. I picked it up a while ago. Um, I actually haven't opened this one up because I didn't really notice the size when I got it. It is 20 millimeters, and I'm actually been using like the 27 or the 28. That seems to work best for me. Thank you. You want to come say hi? Come here. Say hi. Love you. Do you love your baby sister? Yeah? Okay. Um, so anyway, oh, you're soaking wet. Did you spill chocolate milk all over yourself? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Okay, let's go change that. All right, so anyway, when I am feeding her, I do have to use the nipple shields. Um, and with the oversupply issue, I've created a really, really strong letdown. So sometimes she starts choking, which is not super fantastic, but it can happen. So... Um, if she stops eating, it just keeps coming and squirting out and it's dripping all over the place and it just becomes a mess. <laughs> with that being said, with the really strong letdown, I have been using the Hakka silicone pump. So this is what the Hakka looks like. I have this one and I have the Nature brand or Nature Bond or it's an off-brand one. This is the four millimeter Hakka. Whenever I am feeding her, I will attach this to whatever side she is not feeding woof, from. Woof, woof, woof. You show everybody your dog? Woof, woof. Oh, that's like they can't even see. She's been really obsessed with Paw Patrol recently, right? Mm. You have you love Paw Patrol. Mm -hmm. So I will put this on the side that she's not eating from and it creates a suction. So you'll want to push this back, squeeze it, 
put it on and then like unfold and let go. And it creates a suction that pulls out some of the milk that's in on your other side. I was very skeptical of this at first because for myself, since I've always had issues with my kids latching, as a matter of fact, my first and my second never latched. I had to exclusively pump with them. So I was like, I don't know if this is gonna work for me, but I really wanted to try it. Now, we actually got her to latch, which is fantastic. So she is breastfed now. I don't have to feed her with a bottle, but oh, that made it so much easier for me to use this. So. I put this on and I have been collecting the milk in this, which has been fantastic. But just in the past day or two, I've gotten to the point where this holds four ounces and I need something larger because I am starting to overflow this. So I have the four ounce one and yesterday I actually got the five ounce one. So this is bigger as you can tell. It also has a little like suction cup on it so that it doesn't fall over, which is also fantastic. So this is the four ounce one. I just washed it so it is a little wet. Or sorry, this is a five ounce. So this is the five ounce one and it has been working so much better for me because I have been collecting about four ounces and when you collect four ounces with this, it's literally starting to overflow and it will like fall off and it gets really, really heavy. And not that this one doesn't get heavy, but there's just extra room in here so that it still has the suction, it doesn't fall off, I'm not overflowing it, loving this. So if you are breastfeeding but you don't want to pump and you still wanna create an extra stash in your freezer or whatever, definitely recommend these because it does collect anything that is leaking out while you are feeding from the other side. And on the note of leaking, I do leak a lot so instead of using the disposable pads because I will leak through or fill up a pad so often because I am just like leaking all the time I went ahead and I bought reusable pads so I will go ahead and show you what these look like they look like this so the white side is what goes on the inside and the colored side is what goes on the outside isn't this lovely <laughs> I decided to purchase these. They were under $10, I believe, on Amazon. It came with like 12 of them. It came with a cute little carrying case to put them in, and it also came with a bag that you can put them all in and then throw into your laundry. So the reason I wanted to get these is because they were just about the same price as buying a new pack of disposables, but since I'm going through them so much, like guys, I seriously can like fill up three of these and like wring them out. I'm not even joking, like three times a day. It is insane. The pads get super, super heavy, super, super loaded with extra milk that I'm just leaking out. And so instead of going through so many disposables and having to rebuy disposables every week, I decided to get the reusable ones. And since there's 12 in there, I can go like four or five days and then wash them. And so they come in a whole bunch of, beautiful colors <laughs> but yeah purple pink what color is this it's kind of a hard one is it green is that yellow yeah it's green anyway so they are awesome like that and if you are interested in these these are like vegan organic animal friendly like they're awesome so um this is the brand. Like I said, I'll go ahead and leave everything down below. So those are kind of the things that I need just to get myself through the extra supply issue that I'm having. Um, and that is pretty much all I use. I do have the Spectra S2 and I really only use that when I absolutely have to. If I am in so much pain that I have to pump, I will use the Spectra and I get between five and eight ounces each time I pump. Now, the next thing, how have I really created this oversupply? One is through the frequent pumping and using of the Hakka. Your body will kind of create milk on demand. So if you're feeding from one side and that's it, then your body will just give you what your baby needs. Since I am using the Hakka on the other side, my body is also maintaining 
the production that the haka is getting. So if I'm using these and I'm creating like four or five ounces at a time, my body is going to continue to maintain all of that as well as what my baby is eating from my other side. So I'm constantly getting four or five ounces every couple of hours whenever I feed her. And if I were to stop doing that, then my body would kind of regulate a little bit more. Um, it's not so much that I even want to be creating that much of an oversupply, but I do really start to hurt and get a lot of pain and everything gets really hard and turns into rocks and oh, my boobs just start to hurt so bad. So I have been using them just to empty out the other side, which means that I am maintaining that supply and maintaining that oversupply. And so I'm pretty much getting four or five ounces every couple of hours. I don't use it every single time, but I am getting then like 20 extra ounces or so out of it a day, which is pretty good. Some of the things that I am using to create the oversupply are the lactation cookies. So I'll go ahead and leave my recipe that I've been using in the description box. I found it online somewhere. I'll go ahead and link it down below. And I'm also using the Milk Flow um, like chocolate drink supplement. It looks like this. It's not the tastiest thing on the planet, I'm not gonna lie. I usually mix it in with a milkshake. If you mix it in with like hot water or hot milk, it dissolves pretty well, but if you mix it just in with a like cup of cold milk or something like that, it gets really like chalky and it doesn't mix very well. So I definitely don't suggest doing that. But if you wanna mix it in with like a milkshake and have yourself a little milkshake treat every night, it's a really good excuse for that, whether it works or not, you can use it as an excuse. Um, it comes with 18 packets. I think it works. Everybody seems to really have good reviews online, like say good things about it online. Honestly, by the time I started drinking it, I already had such a big oversupply that it was really hard for me to tell whether or not it was working. But I have been using this and they also have a fruit version. So this is the berry flavored, looks like this. Also comes with 18 in a packet and I'll just try to mix this in with the smoothie. It kind of does the same thing. Blends a little bit better, but it's still not like super fantastic. One of the um, really big things about this is that it has that fenugreek in it, um, which is also in the lactation cookies that I make. And it does have like a kind of a strong flavor, so you will taste it in these as well as the cookies. So if that's like a really bad aversion to you, then you probably don't want to eat these. But if you need to increase your supply, I highly recommend these as well as the cookies. I definitely see a huge difference when I eat the cookies um, and I've made them and I eat like two to three a day and they usually last me like two weeks. I put them in the freezer. They taste way better in the freezer than they do just at room temperature. So I put them in the freezer and I eat them frozen. Those are the only things that I'm doing as far as diet and like supplements that I'm taking. Of course, I have my prenatal vitamins, but that's really about it. I'm not doing anything else. I'm just doing the extra pumping and the Haka and these three supplements. For when I get enough to freeze, like I said, I'm freezing in about five ounce bags. I am using these bags and they come looking like this. You can write up at the top how much you've got, date, time, you know, whatever you want on this. And then you, can you guys see the little like dotted line? You tear this off, open it up and pour your milk in and then you can seal it. And what I do to seal them is when I have the liquid in here, I put it up against like the edge of a counter like this. And then say like the liquid comes to like right here. I will squeeze out all the extra air along the, the side of the counter and then I will seal it up and then I take it and I put it laying down in my freezer and I freeze it like that. And then they fit perfectly into that little storage container, like so. <laughs> but essentially this is all I've been doing to create this oversupply and how I've managed to pump over 85 ounces of milk in my first week. And to me that is absolutely insane. I've never had this much of an oversupply. Last time with my second daughter, I had to work all week just to get enough milk in bottles and frozen so that I could be out all day Saturday while I had my color guard and dance competitions. 
I, it was so stressful. I'd come home and there'd be like two ounces of milk left in my fridge and that was it. And then I'd have to work the entire week, every single day, all week long, I'd have to be pumping extra and trying so hard just to build that stash up. And now it's like using the Hakka and all of these different things. Like I literally am just leaking and exploding with milk. So anyway, I thought I would go ahead and share that. I do want to say that Although having an oversupply seems like such a fantastic thing, it can also be a negative thing. So this is great for me that I have all of this milk. It puts my mind at ease knowing that I've got a lot of backup supply for her, that I'm creating enough for her. However, with that being said, since I'm creating so much, I am in a lot of pain all the time. I am having mastitis. I am having... Um, clogged ducks I am out in public and I am just hurting so bad with no way of getting relief because even if she were to eat one side is still more full or she's not getting all of it out and so it is causing a lot of problems as far as just being comfortable and being in pain and it's disrupting my sleep because I'll wake up in the middle of the night in so much pain that I have to get up and get my pump parts and then I have to sit around and I have to pump and I have to make sure that it's going around her schedule too. So if she's gonna wake up in half an hour, then I kind of just have to deal with it and wait for her to eat and then pump. And so it is starting to cause some issues. So I feel like I need to start kind of regulating myself a little bit or cut back somehow to help manage the oversupply and the pain that I'm feeling with the oversupply. So I just wanna mention that, that if you are trying to create an oversupply, that that can be an adverse side effect of having an oversupply, but it also is very good for putting your mind at ease because I know that I've got so much milk. I could be out of the house for almost a week and have enough milk. So if something were to happen to me or I need to go to the hospital or anything like that, I do have a very large stash for her. So I'll go ahead and show you again. This is my stash that I have. It's falling out. I can't fit any more in here. I try to fit them all in for the sake of this video. But anyway, that is my stash that I currently have. So hopefully this video has helped somebody out there. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Again, check out the description box for everything that I've shown in this video. And let me know what you guys have done for your oversupply or undersupply or how you are maintaining your supply. I would love to hear from you and I'm sure others would love to hear your ideas and opinions as well because breastfeeding is very difficult for a lot of us. It's very difficult for me and a lot of us just need that encouragement from others. So give everybody your tips down below and I will see you guys in the next one. Give this video a big thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time.